Hostile Show. My name is Kirby Lammers, filling in for Kevin Price today, and we're going to get right into this busy, busy show. I hope everything is going well for you today. Uh, but let's welcome our first guest, and his name is Mr. Uh, Wilted Simmons, and I really will say Dr. Wilted Simmons. And, uh, so he is a plastic surgeon at Memorial Hermann. Uh, hospital uh, of that city campus at 902 Frostwood, which I've been to many, many, many times. Uh, but, uh, so how are things going for you today, Wilton? Well, they seem like they're doing pretty good. I've uh, been out for a couple of weeks because I had uh, jury duty last week. And oh, boy. I really enjoyed doing my civic duty, but uh, I'm also glad not to be doing it. So, <laughs> so I'm glad to be back. Well, good deal. Good deal. Well, you're a doctor, and uh, well, tell us a little bit about what you do. I know you're a plastic surgeon. What's going on uh, that's new with plastic surgery at this day and time? Well, there's always something new. I mean, yeah. of course, you always have to kind of filter through all that and say, well, how much of this is worth anything? Yes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I think we have the usual things. There's. Uh, uh, yeah, I think the big new thing right now is mainly people are doing less invasive stuff and maybe doing more work with uh, filling agents, uh, going and filling the wrinkles with various different dermal products. Uh, you see a lot of uh, light chemical peels, uh, sure. things like that that kind of take care of the skin itself rather than going in and doing the invasive, uh, invasive surgery so much. Uh, but there's always, uh, you know, you s I saw that ABC is doing something on facial transplants tonight. Uh, obviously, I don't do facial transplants. Uh, there's, I think, been two done in the United States so far. Okay. But uh, you know, the frontiers are always out there being pushed back. So uh, you know, sometimes we, uh, sometimes we're there, and sometimes that's way someplace else. So. Of course. Well, we know that people are wanting to look much better this day and time, right. and people are spending quite a bit of money looking better. Right. Um, I know there are dark spots. Uh, people filling in all those little lines and wrinkles. I probably could use a little bit of that myself. Uh, I used to walk around with a sign at one time saying, "We'll work for Jupiter." <laughs> <laughs> right. But anyway, uh, so in, in in that process, I mean, first of all, you know, people are looking in the mirror and they're seeing these little things that need improvement. What should be their very first step? Well, I think first step, obviously, uh, would be go to your plastic surgeon and just let him. You know, ask him the questions. And some of this stuff, obviously, if it's skin, I mean, you might have a good dermatologist you're used to going to. Sure. Uh, we have a good relationship with the dermatologist uh, in our area. They do certain things, and they will refer it to us if they feel like they don't want to do it or can't do it. Uh, but the, uh, I think the best step is just go to somebody that really knows instead of sitting there trying to get the information from your next door neighbor who used to be a school nurse and things like that. So, uh, but once you go, then he can kind of evaluate the situation and tell you what he thinks is possible and uh, what he doesn't, and also what he thinks will not work. So, there's a question that people ask me all the time. I've been in the wellness sector for a long mm -hmm. time, and uh, they they ask, well, how do I properly choose a plastic surgeon? What steps do I take? How do I know I'm going to somebody that's really going to treat me right, do a good job, so I'm not walking around, uh, you know, all distorted and everything? Right. Well, that's really a frustrating thing probably for everybody these days. I mean, I think everybody's had it drilled in them, into them for so long that be sure you go see a board certified whatever. Uh, the problem is all these fake boards or these pseudo boards have sprung up, so you may go to somebody and you think he's board certified, and he may be, but he's not certified in what you do. Right. And uh, today we have ENT doctors, ear, nose, and throat doctors doing plastic surgery. They're very good at doing things above the clavicles, above the collarbones. Mm -hmm. But some things like breast augmentations and things like that they should not be doing, and any legitimate uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor will tell you that. Uh, we also, though, have uh, family practitioners. We have one time we even ran into a podiatrist that was trying to do plastic surgery, and he was board certified in podiatry. So what you need to do is uh, there's only one board for plastic surgery. That's the American Board of Plastic Surgery. Period. Uh, the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgeons is not a board. The American Board of Cosmetic Surgery is not a board. There's a uh, an organization called the American Board of Medical Specialties and they recognize approximately 18 different specialties and the ones they recognize are the quote real boards and you can pop that up on Google or any place else you want to look at it and if the board that your doctor has isn't on that list he's not legitimately certified in American medicine today. 
Okay. I'm sure many plastic surgeons specialize there. They're really the best in certain things. Mm -hmm. What would you be the best in? Oh, I don't know. I, uh, the old joke is uh, I'm a hand surgeon. I do anything I can get my hands on. Okay. But, uh, and there is an opening in town for a hand surgeon right now, <laughs> as it turns out. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I went into plastics because I like the variety. Sure. When I first started out, I did do a lot of trauma, did a lot of burns, uh, you know, crunched faces, crunched hands, and all that stuff. Now I do less trauma. But I do do a fair amount of uh, I do a fair amount of the cosmetic or the aesthetic end of things. Sure. But uh, I also see a fair number of people. West Texas just a little bit earlier before the show started, and uh, so I have some West Texas roots uh, right. along along with Dr. Sim uh, Simmons here, and we were talking, uh, you know, about rattlesnakes and things like that. Right. But but speaking of skin out there, the the climate is so dry right. and the wind blows so hard. The, our last family reunion out in Robert Lee, Texas, right, which right. you're very familiar with. Uh, the wind was blowing so hard it was like we, we were just going through some type of sandblasting oh, yeah. on our faces and it took about a week of using my utilizing my wife's creams right. uh, to get my face back again but but with the sun damage and, and the brown spots and, and and the things that you can't see mm -hmm. uh, it, it's amazing what is there that you can't see and no, I know. what type of equipment do you have that that can show people um, you know what that skin really looks like uh, that magnifies all those little areas you don't see yet. Right. Well, you can. There are things to do that. I don't have that in you my office, okay. but there are things you can. You know, put on uh, the person's face and then turn on a UV light, like yes. a CSI or something like that, mm -hmm. and all this stuff lights up. Uh, hopefully, the guy's legitimate that does that for you. But uh, you're right. I go out to my family reunions, and I, all my cousins who are the same age I am. Sure. Look like they're about 20 years older because their face is all worn and cracked and all that stuff. So uh, down here, uh, one of the many blessings we have is the humidity. You know. So. Yes. Yeah, I always thought that's a blessing. You know? Yeah, right. You may have a heat stroke, but uh, but that gives your face doesn't crack. So, uh, but it, uh, that's true. Your face does stay uh, a little bit better down here than it does up there. So. Sure. What What can you tell our audience? more about, you know, in, in plastic surgery. If you're, if you're going to have, let's say, you want a breast augmentation or you want uh, something done uh, to your face, and do uh, you go out and, you, and you, get, you get pictures and things like right. that to show the plastic surgeon? Uh, how do you go about to show that plastic surgeon what you want versus what the plastic surgeon wants? Right. Well, it, people do do that. They can bring in uh, their pictures, and they, you find out in a real big hurry, though, that all this stuff is kind of in uh, terms of, I don't know, I don't exactly how to say it, but what is big to the patient isn't necessarily big to you, okay. and uh, what's small to you is not necessarily small to the patient. And I, The typical augmentation patient that comes in, I think they're a little bit nervous or embarrassed about being there the first time, and so they'll say, well, I don't want to be real big, I just want to be, you know, fuller. He okay. said, okay. So, and then someone, well, I've got to, you know, talk to him, and after a while, they said, well, I've got a few pictures here. i got a Playboy. Do you mind looking at them? Oh, no. Okay. And they pull out these <laughs> pictures, and you look at them, and you say, well, <laughs> ma'am, I hate to tell you this, this is not a B cup. <laughs> so you have to kind of try to be sure you and the patient are on the same page, you know, as far right. as size. And, and that they look in proportion. Right. Of sure. Yeah, yeah, that's what we try to do. We try to just make people look natural or full or whatever the term is without making them look uh, obscene and like they're getting ready to tip over. Most people don't want to look that big. Right. If you look unusual or abnormal, uh, I don't want to make anyone like that, and most people don't want to be that way. Sure. So they, they want to look realistic right? and, sure. and like it's their, their, their natural selves. Right. You can, sometimes these people look too artificial right. and too plastic. Sure, I agree, and I just I don't want to make people like that. And every now and then somebody demands that, but, uh, right. but we, uh, we try to do the best we can. Okay. Well, we're talking here to uh, Dr. Uh, Wilton Simmons and uh, plastic surgeon. If you could uh, give our audience all your contact information, so uh, I know they will want to contact somebody that's truly board certified and somebody that they can trust. Uh, if you could uh, kind of give them their information, please. Okay. Well, it's C. Wilton Simmons, Jr., uh, MD, and I'm at uh, uh, the Memorial Herman Memorial City uh, campus. And uh, the phone number is 713-932-6467. And the uh, website is uh, westhoustonplasticsurgery.com. And uh, 
all the email and all that is listed on there. So you know, give us a call or you know whatever, and we'd be glad to see you. Okay. Well, thank you for being on the show today. You are listening to America Lifestyle, and we're powered by uh, CBS Radio Talk 650. We'll be right back. Perfect. (laughs) 